Let's try this again then. Now that I have my controller plugged in. Welcome to the first planet. We're already in disc form. Uh, why isn't my stick working? This is fine. I already forgot how to control the game, see? <laughs> That's okay. Let me build up some more speed. Okay, so I'm heading for this ridge over here because I know that it's long. Can you just get a big old boost? We're up in the sky now. And I'm gonna try and pull off a sonic boom. Nope, I hit the ground. Well, I almost got it. I think I quit out just a second before that sonic boom. So now I'm going slow again. Okay, we'll pick up speed. Here we go. There we go, I got a sonic boom finally. That's what it looks like when you hit uh, supersonic mode. You go very fast. Almost done with level one once we get past these pillar sections. Um, anytime now, it's gonna say in the bottom left that I'm like 20 kilometers away, I think, from the beacon. Staying close to the ground does per, uh, preserve speed, at least for a little bit. There's my 20 kilometer message. this pill right here. Actually use this hill right here. This is the one I was thinking of. So like I said, there's there's really not a lot of, like, there's no music in the levels, it's just the sound of flight, and then you get a little bit of flavor music and atmosphere throughout whenever. And here's the 2001 of Space Odyssey. <laughs> I'm going to skip that now. The 
This next planet's called Noe. Flying between these pillars generates a lot of speed. So we're gonna try and chain these together to get a whole lot of speed. Now these orbs, they they present as power-ups in the game, but they aren't actually power-ups. All they do is reduce the um, they reduce the timer of the in-game time by 30 seconds. So they're saving me time when I pick them up. Essentially, they take 30 seconds off the in-game timer. Yes, it's thrilling and calming. Um, it's extremely stressful to pull off as a speedrun, but also extremely satisfying. Because maintaining momentum on this thing is much harder than I'm making it look. My my casual run, the first time I played this, was a, almost was a little over two hours. RTA, in game time, just under two hours. And it was rough. Alright, let's see if I can get a sonic boom out of this. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get enough height. Oh, maybe I did. Nope, I hit the ground too hard. That's okay, because this section of flying through the clouds, uh, when you're in clouds, it, it kind of uses, I guess, the, as you can see, the particles around the craft. Like the charged ions in the clouds speed you up. So I'm going to stay in the clouds sometimes when I have them in the levels. Take advantage of that. Here I'm gonna go, gonna go for the boom uh, if I can. Nope, not quite. It's all right. Oh, this is a bad angle. Oh, we're very high. We're very high. Uh, I knew there was gonna be one of these in the way though. It's okay though. We get corrected. Not a giant time loss. I'll just use the clouds. Ah, uh, just a second too early. Um, I think I'll take this launcher over here. Just because... I can hit it. There we go. Free boom. Non-causal object detected. So this is like part of like the weird, again, fifth dimensional things that you're interacting with. This non-causal object will pop up a few times throughout the game. 
It's leading us on the path toward our destination. All right, welcome to Kiranus 2. This one is a lot of low flying. There's not a lot of high structure. So this one's about maintaining momentum close to the ground. So it's gonna be a lot of bouncing. See, there's a non-causal object in front of me. All right, Marie, sleep well. Thanks for hanging out. hit this launcher and I want to try and preserve as much of this speed as possible for as long as possible very nice um, no there are no failure states You just either go fast or you go very slow. There is a level where you can go out of bounds very easily, which poses a little bit of trouble. I did it on my casual playthrough. Ah, I missed my launch here. I need to find a different. Let's go for this plasma stream. Um, when I get to that level, I'm going to be attempting to do an out-of-bounds that's part of the speed run. But if I mess it up, you'll see how I get back inbounds. Very nice. And here's the end of the level. Whoops, hit that harder than I wanted to. It's okay. Pretty good level. You see, I saved some good time there. I'm happy with that level. Next up, we got Nautica. This is like the longest level in the game. It's beautiful to look at, but it's very long because it's just water and it's a lot of RNG. There's a few different strats for dealing with all of it. I kind of just stick with the bounce strat. But sometimes you might see me go underwater when I see that there's cloud cover above me so that I can get into the clouds and try and get a sonic boom. So what happened is there's these meteors dropping out of the sky. Um, I skipped the cutscene, but when we arrived here, the, the whole planet was surrounded by an asteroid field. And the mass of our object entering the solar system or the system and getting approaching the planet pulled all of these asteroids out of the field behind us. They were attracted to us as we entered the atmosphere. So now we're down here dealing with them falling into the atmosphere while we're trying to traverse the surface of the ocean planet. And as you might expect, if you can catch any of those spots where they're, when they hit the water and the water splashes up, those do effectively work like thermals. 
and will push you into the sky. But they're so random that it's like, it's not worth going for. You'll just hit them by accident as you're going through the stage. Okay, I am going to go for a dive because I see clouds. can gain a surprising amount of height from doing this. There's a boom, and then I'm going to get some height from this boom. And then hopefully chain a second boom where I don't have to go underwater. We'll see. Nope. Still it's fast. Not close enough to these clouds, I guess. So yeah, this stage is beautiful to look at. But uh, it just, it goes on forever. <laughs> they really wanted to make sure that you got to have a good look at the the water physics that they put into the game. Come on, reach the cloud. Wait, am I not going toward the marker? I am. What's going on here? I really like things with massive scale and size, so it's cool. It kind of just puts the expanse of oceans in perspective. It does. It is an ocean planet, after all. We're about to get into this thunderstorm that's the end of it. Where the waves are going to get lo much larger. And there's going to be lightning and all that stuff. Like, you can already see how big these waves are. <laughs> They're like the, the mountains from the previous levels. Okay, this, as you can see, there is an orb up here, but it's kind of hard to get because of how random the waves are. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it. That's fine, though, because like I said, it's only a 30-second time save. And I was not able to grab it in my PB anyway. Try and fly up into this thunderstorm here. Did I reach it? Yes. Uh, not quite. <laughs> I'm very high up. <laughs> oh, there are uh, icebergs up here. We unfortunately hit one. I didn't think we had reached them yet. So this is me abandoning that strategy and I'm just going to fly to the end.
Okay, that's the end of that level. Welcome to part two. We're still on Nautica. But now it's a calm. Okay. You can see multiple uh, points of light at this one. The gimmick of this level is I need to fly to those three blue points of light in order to activate the uh, transport to get off the planet. It currently has no power. I'm gonna try and use this shallow water to gain some height. Keep skating off of it. There's a cloud right there I want to get. Come on, there we go. Should be enough for a boom, I think. Almost to the first object. Try and get up over this ridge. It's gonna barely make it. <laughs> now you can see what happens when you lose momentum. It gets so slow on these uphill sections. Almost can't maintain disc form. Hold on. Let me do this. For real? I'm just gonna go back to this launcher. I'm gonna lose time for it, but... Oh no, I went too low. I went too low. Up, up, up. There we go. <laughs> Saved it. All 
Uh, I can see all that time I lost on the hill. That stinks. If I can get the skip on Dramulum the next stage, it'll save all that time and a lot more. Clara, let me get to Duramulum, please. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get enough height there. I need to turn back. Need more speed. Try that again. I want to get up here. There we go. Okay. I'm going to focus up and see if I can do this trick or not. We are now going out of bounds. See, I went too far down. It means I need to course correct this way. Alright, where is this going to pop me out? I have no idea where I am currently. I'm flying into the abyss between worlds. Eventually it'll loop me back around. At least it's supposed to. Or did I fly way too far away? We're about to find out. I'm not seeing any objects, which is making me, uh, making me worry that I've fallen too far away from the map. And I've now gotten away from its, uh, gravity well. Oh no, I see things. Hold on. I see things. That's a good sign. I'm just going to fly through this. I don't know where I am, but at least I'll be back up above sky. Uh, where is this? Oh, I'm right here. Okay. I'm supposed to be going this way. Okay, well, I've lost a ton of time here. I don't think this is going to PB now because of that. I have to fly through the stage like normal. Which happened to my PB, but I recovered a lot faster than that in the PB. And this stage just kind of sucks. That's why it's um, it's good to skip in the speedrun. I just haven't quite mastered that out of bounds movement yet. Okay, we're getting close to the end, though. Clark, 
climb these tree branches. Which is a little odd because it doesn't the ball doesn't really function the same as like it does in like a marble game, like a monkey ball. It's hard to explain how this thing controls. Uh, we're not too far away from PB Pace. Because that's, that's it right there. Okay. We're still on track. We're okay. That's got to do the rest of the stage as well. Which is uh, a lot to be asked. Oh, this is the space stage. You're going to love this one, Brett. <laughs> this is the one where you have to use the gravity wells of the asteroids to uh, keep propelling yourself to the exit. I was stuck here for quite a while, casually. But we're going to use this ring to propel ourselves toward this asteroid. And then slingshot past all these asteroids to a, to the end of the stage. Uh, that should still catch that gravity well. There we go. We're gonna head toward the next one. I'm worried about my speed, but this should hopefully still get me away from this asteroid. If we get caught in this asteroid's gravity well, that would be heartbreaking. Uh, nope, we made it out. We're good. We're now in the gravity well of this one. Full speed ahead. That's a good core needs. Exactly, that's a Super Mario Galaxy level. Okay, this is the hardest level in the game. Uh, your goal here is to gain enough speed to get a whole lot of height. If you don't start off correctly, which I didn't, it, it's going to take me a while to do that. Oh, okay. I also have no steering. So... I can only use the the ground that's ahead of me to gain height. This is perfect. This is perfect. Okay, please be high enough. Please be high enough. Uh, it's not quite high enough. No! Oh, this sucks. Okay. Well, we're losing time. It's okay, though. We're going to get some good launches. Off of that, if I was going fast enough. I'm kind of stuck in a loop here, it looks like. Uh, I held for too long. The thing that sucks about the speed run is you can't reset levels. So if you mess up the setup at the very beginning of the level and you're like this, you're stuck like this. You either reset or you just deal with it. Come on. Give me something to work with, please. Please? Uh, 
Uh, that's not going to be high enough. This might be, though. There we go. Perfect. Okay, we have to get high enough to get uh, disc form in this level. Because we can only get charged particles in the atmosphere. And the cool thing about being charged particles, while we have that water around, is that we get free sonic booms. I'm going to take advantage of these clouds as much as possible while they're around. I'm losing momentum. I don't like that. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I'm extremely far away from the end of the stage, and I'm already losing time, so... PB is unlikely because of the stage. But we'll see, because Darwin and Obias can both be pretty terrible. It's gonna hang out in these clouds. Getting close, so we're gonna be like, what, a minute behind or so? Something like that. I did lose a lot of time on Darwin and Obias in my PB, so... PB's still possible. Did not want to hit that. This is fine though. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Saved. doing pretty good for speed here at the beginning. It's the end of the stage where I made all my big mistakes, though. Let's grab this orb. Skip that tunnel because there's one over here with an updraft that I want to catch.
Oh, I'm gonna get a big ol' super boom out of this. One more boom should do it. Here we go. And catch this wind. going a little bit too fast there. <laughs> it's okay because the whole strat here is to use these booms while we're down in between these areas. Okay, we're gonna hit one right here. It's a little close to that wall. Okay, can I get through these things? Okay, it's okay if I don't get that one. Let's try and get this one. Very nice. That saves so much time. Holy crap. All right, back on PV pace. Just gotta make it through a bias where we can lose all that time again. A bias has a win mechanic. So if we're playing F-Zero, this is Deathwind, the track. So you wanna try and stay low so that the wind isn't pushing you too much when the wind is blowing. And then toward the end of the stage, we enter a very mountainous region. And it becomes a lot of improvisation there as far as how we can use the sides of the mountains to get sonic booms, if possible. Yes, this that's another thing about this game that I didn't mention, is it reminds me a lot of uh, F-Zero. Except flying. <laughs> okay, bouncing on water slow. Now we're now we got land, so this will be a little faster. We're reaching the mountain range. Use this. Uh, it wasn't as good as I thought it would be. We'll try a different one. Um, none of these look good. Oh, I still got a sonic boom, though. That's nice. I want to get some more height. 
There we go. Didn't maintain very long, though. Oh, that's a mountain. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to hit the water. The water on Obias slows you down significantly. Oh lord, that's bad. I've hit a bad spot. It's okay, we're recovering, we're recovering. I want to grab this orb. Then down we go. I want to hit this launcher. Not hit this mountain. Thank you. That was a good boom. Okay, so I had one, like, really bad meme there in the mountains. Otherwise, this was not a horrible Obias. By my standards. Um, Obias, unfortunately, as the winter level, is exactly like the winter level of Journey. Um, Story-wise, you can see in the bottom left it's saying my power source is growing low. I'm going to run out of power before I ever reach this next um, transport. So I'm going to start slowing down dramatically. And switch to ball form. And eventually the ball is going to slow down to a crawl. I am going to watch for when it slows down, though, because I can end the level early at that point. I can just hit back on the controller. And it'll automatically end the level for me. Here. Cool. We just have... Uh Sealess left. This is an entirely flight level. Um, there's these purple storm clouds. We can kind of stay ionized inside the clouds and go fast. There's no bottom to the level, so we can get a lot of sonic booms here. It is difficult to get booms here, though. You need a lot of speed. See, I didn't even get one there, and I went to the bottom of the map. I mostly, when I play this level, try to stay as much in the clouds as possible. Makes for some interesting bisexual lighting between the ship and the blue marker that we're going for. I'm going to hit this. It's a mechanic that's only in this stage. These, like, charged particles that you can charge up. And then release. Like that for a super boom. So I will do that. I'm going to catch this one, too. Go ahead and charge this up and release it into the cloud. And I 
don't see another one, so I'm going to go down. Exactly, let's go bisexual lighting. It's the best way to end the stage, the end of the game. I try to stay in this level where I can see those particles. Oh, oh, ooh, here's one of these. Nice. Give it. I don't know if this one's worth going for. Is there one beneath it? No. Yeah, it's just too far away. It's not worth going for. This one might be, depending on what arc I'm at when I get above it. Here's the next one. I don't know if this is worth it. Am I close enough? There's not one, but no, below it. Ah, eh, we're here already. We got it. We're getting close to the end of the stage. I'm just going to finish out the stage down here. When we contact this beam of light, it'll be time. In game time, 4927 down in the bottom left. That's my new PB, 4927. I'm going to go ahead and show the end of the game. Uh, I'll go into the black hole. Thanks for the GG's. You have to let them go? No, I ain't let them go. We're gonna save my friends. I can get them back. If I'm not afraid to go into the black hole. Alright. Enjoy fifth dimensional space. Thanks for the GG's. I think I'm ideally want to shoot for sub 40. If I ever want to like submit this to anything, I want to at least be sub 40 in game time. So I could give an estimate of about 45 minutes. We'll get there. This run already saved almost three minutes. Yeah, environment RNG is a big thing. Um, learning the skip on Duramulum, that's another big thing. You essentially, I, I would have almost been straight to the end of that level had I gotten the, uh, the skip. So that's like five minutes I can save on Duramulum alone by getting the out-of-bound skip. Luckily, there is a chapter select. So I can practice that level over and over until I get consistent. Same with, uh, was it Sojournus? The one with the, where you have no control over direction and you have to get enough speed to get up to the clouds need to practice that level over and over as well. Now, 
And we went back through the Big Bang. We're coming back to the present. We're approaching Jupiter. Time is meaningless to us because we've entered fifth dimensional space. And we're going to save our friends from dying on Jupiter. What happens to us? Who knows? A mystery. Jupiter is a lousy place to die. There's the ejection pods. It's an entire world filled with clouds. You'd never touch the ground. I want to go. I want to go. But I can skip at this point to uh, the epilogue, I believe. The credits, but this is the epilogue that happens after the credits. We're on Jupiter. We're in first person and we can just, you know, fly around. We will forever be on Jupiter now. Yeah, that's XO one Hope you all enjoyed watching it. It's a really cool game. I, I, I quite love the movement. I love the atmosphere. It's like, it's all the things I love in a game. It just has a very high skill ceiling for the speedrun. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the run. When I get better, I'll be able to chain a lot more uh, Sonic Booms together. So that the levels will be going a lot faster. But for novice strategies, and this only being my second run, I'm pretty happy with the 49 in game time. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and end the journey. Big was hanging out, but I saw Big went live. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is instead of doing another run of this, uh, I'll go ahead and give a rest to my hands because this is quite intensive on the hands, as you might imagine. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll raid over to Big. Let's see what Big Scared is playing. There's my PB, 4927.